Hello dear friends, today me and my friend Ankit will discuss the one of the difficult topic of hematology, chronic myelin leukemia in simple and smart way with the incorporated topic of preclinical subject to clinical way so you can solve your clinical questions for your next exam in simple and smart way. So let's start the discussion of chronic myelin leukemia. Before that I would like to teach you there is, we have divided the topics like that physiology discussion pathology clinical features investigation biopsy and treatment protocol for the chronic myelin leukemia so let's start the basic understanding about the hematopoiesis hematopoiesis is the process by different blood cells are forming so in which pluripotent cell from the bone marrow divided and differentiated into common myeloid progenitor cells and common lymphoid progenitor cells which is also differentiated into immature erythroblast, mast cell, myeloblast and megakaryocytes which become to mature form the thrombocyte called as platelets. Myeloblast matures into basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils and monocytes. Common lymphoid progenitor cells matures into NK cells, B cells and T cells also divided into plasma cells. So we have classification of the leukemia by different cell forming the in different cell forming the different type of leukemic features so we have divided the blood components into rbc wbc and platelet part but in this video we are just focusing on the wbc leukemic cell so wbc divided into leukemia which is divided into acute lymphocytic leukemia acute myeloblastic leukemia chronic lymphocytic leukemia and chronic myelogenous leukemia for the discussion will be discussed by my friend Anki. Hello everyone, since today we are discussing about CML, so it is essential for us to know about what is CML. CML is basically a myeloproliferative disorder of hematopoietic stem cell characterized by increase in myeloid cells and Philadelphia chromosome. So increase in myeloid precursors is what makes CML a unique cancer. So CML falls under the category of myeloproliferative disorders. Other disorders in myeloproliferative disorders are essential thrombocytosis, polycythemia vera, myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia and obviously CML. So we'll look at the basic abnormality in CML. So the onset is usually in 5th and 6th decade of life and it is usually insidious and the person may have history of radiation exposure. So we'll look at the genetic defect. It is basically a non-inheritable disorder. We have chromosome number 9 on which we have ABL. ABL stands for abelson murine leukemia virus Pain. and BCR is breakpoint cluster region. So here we have balanced translocation of 9 and 22. Why do I say balanced? Because nothing is lost and nothing is gained. As a result of this translocation, the length of chromosome number 9 increases and chromosome number 22 decreases. As a result of this fusion of BCR and ABL, we have a protein of 210 kilodalton produced. So this protein causes reduction in apoptosis as well as uncontrolled tyrosine kinase activity. So CML, it is a triphasic illness. That is, we have chronic phase, accelerated phase and blast phase. The symptom may vary depending on which phase the, uh, the patient has presented to us. So progression of CML, we first have the chronic phase. Here the patient may be insidiously diagnosed and it may be accidental finding not because, because he may have non-specific symptoms like non-specific symptoms and blast count is usually less than 10%. In accelerated phase, the blast count is between 10 to 19 percent and in blast crisis, it is usually more than 20 percent. It is not necessary that always the accelerated phase may convert to blast crisis. Sometimes chronic phase also converts to blast crisis directly. In blast crisis, usually it converts to acute leukemia. In most of the cases, it is AML in 70 percent of the cases and ALL in 30 percent of the cases. So we'll look at the clinical feature. As said, the patient may present in 5th to 6th decade of his life, he may have insidious presentation. Sometimes the findings are not so relevant and he may have non-specific symptoms. Non-specific symptoms are attributed to hypermetabolic state and the non-specific symptoms are fever and fatigue, anorexia, weight loss, night sweats, heat intolerance. Along with that, he may have 
bones which become tender especially the sternum the reason being it is due to extramedullary hematopoiesis and periosteal irritation he may have petit shape due to redu reduction in platelet counts he may have enlarged spleen due to leukemic infiltration or hematopoietic stem cell uh, extramedullary hematopoiesis he may have bleeding tendencies he may have pain in the joint he may have loss of weight and swollen lymph node at times and hepatosplenomegaly so after proceeding towards the history will go to diagnosis history and examination and then diagnosis we'll first go with complete blood counts complete blood count there is increase in myeloid series that means increase in neutrophils increase in basophil this increase in basophil will cause release of histamine this histamine is responsible for pruritus flushing of the face and diarrhea we'll go for abdominal scan to look for hepatosplenomegaly we'll look for engorged pain and large pain and large pain can be looked for in uh, by clinical method there are four ways to palpate pain first is classical hooking dipping and by manual way initially the spleen is non tender but when the spleen is tender along with friction rub splenic friction rub it indicates that the spleen has undergone infarction for di for cytogenetic diagnosis we will go for pcr and fish at the same time we are, we also need to be careful of other cytogenetic abnormality in case of cml those are trisomy number 8 duplication of philadelphia chromosome and isochromosome number 17 so we'll do, we'll go with the lab reports and peripheral breast smear usually it is normocytic normochromic anemia but at times it may be macrocytic anemia the reason being as this there is rapid turnover of cells and there may be folate deficiency and rapid turnover of cell also leads to increase in uric acid and increase in lactate dehydrogenase platelets may show thrombocytosis or at times they may be normal also wbc count they may range from 10000 to 6 lakhs also and very few blasts in the chronic phase leukemic cell with evidence of maturation basophilia is there hyper bone marrow biopsy bone marrow biopsy is very essential for diagnosis it shows hypercellular bone marrow with C blue histiocytes. They are also known as pseudo gotcha cells. For Philadelphia chromosome, it is though sensitive in hundred percent of the patients. It's not specific, as I said earlier. It is also seen in AML and ALL. For detection of Philadelphia chromosome, we'll go for fresh and RT PCR. We'll also go for lab score. Lab score is the score which helps in differentiating leukemoid reaction and CML. Leukemoid reaction is basically increase in leukocyte in a patient not having leukemia. So other findings in uh, leukemoid reactions are dole bodies, toxic granulations, and they may not have as prominent hepatosplenomegaly as it is seen in CML. And in case of CML, lab score is Rio and we have cytogenetic abnormality fish and pcr that's used for diagnosing of cytogenetic abnormality and bone marrow biopsy as discussed earlier so now with it we'll continue so as you have understand the basic details about the physiology pathological part and diagnostic and lab reports of the cml so we are focusing on the peripheral blood smear in which what different Uh, different cells of our uh, myeloid lineage will be mature to immature cell will be identified in the peripheral blood smear or bone marrow biopsy so in this peripheral smear showing the immature granulocyte like basophils and eosinophilia so this is the cell as you are seeing the large nucleus and large cytoplasmic is the promyelocyte it is the immature cells of myeloid series associated with metamyelocyte and new band forms are also seen it is like the band like and there is the basophil which is the classical features of peripheral blood smear in the cml part so let's see the actual picture of peripheral blood smear and bone marrow biopsy 
in this we you are seeing this is the cell which is the rbcs and this is the band cell u like features this is showing the band form metamyelocyte which is the increasing n nu nu nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is increased in the metamyelocyte and this is the promyelocyte which is mostly cover the nucleus of the cells and it is the myelocyte which is the immature cells of myeloid lineage so how we are going to treat this patient and patient have decrease and relief from his clinical features so we have different type of drugs and clinic uh, different type of drugs like imitinib tyrosine kinase inhibitor drugs interferon and we have surgical process like stem cell transplant and splenectomy so main goal of treatment is that we have to complete decrease the abnormal cells of leukemic which have translocation 922 from bone marrow and circulating blood cells from the body so we have to do complete molecular remission in this patient so we are using the tyrosine kinase inhibitors which inhibit the tyrosine kinase enzyme and decrease the excessive proliferation of abnormal leukemic cells so we have in the first generation we have imatinib and in second generation we have dasatinib and nilotinib drugs which is used in this patient for remission of the symptom we are also using in the some patient interferon alpha which is also reducing the abnormal leukemic cells from the bone marrow and increases the survival rate for this patient and new modality of treatment coming in the way in the new feature it will be a stem cell transplant but it is tried in the third tertiary level centers not generally described to the all the patient and it has shown the benefits to the stem cell transplant and decreases the uh, abnormal leukemic cells and we we will do a splenectomy in this patient so we have better decrease in features of splen splenomegaly and splenic irritation and we have reduced the symptom of patient by this splenectomy of the spleen so we have tyrosine kinase interferon stem cell transplant and uh, splenectomy for prognostic of this cma we are just following some of the prognostic factors like socal prognostic score and utos prognostic score generally we are following the socal prognostic criteria in which we are following the spleen size with blast cell number with age and platelet count with every regular 3 to 6 month usg and blood cell picture from every 3 to 6 months as see with the treatment the treatment is progressive or treatment is effective for this patient or not so we have to change the our plan to remission of the symptom depending on this patient so we will follow the socal criteria and utos criteria for this patient so this is the this was the complete integrated discussion by me and my friend ankit of the chronic myeloid leukemia hope you have understand the topic completely if you have any questions type in the comment box we will try to answer each and every questions so thank you so much guys and keep studying and keep learning thank you everyone